Well, hello everybody! Welcome to this episode of G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And yeah, it's October 3rd, 2021. I just realized I got another birthday coming up. I guess I'm going to be born again. Ha ha ha. Oh, anyway, here we are over at Tom's uh, condo. And uh, today I glued my rafters together. And uh, this is what I'm going to be putting on here is uh, the rafters like this. And I started telling you yesterday that uh, this side of the condo is doesn't go all the way back to the uh, container. There's a, a gap back there. But this side does go all the way back to the container. So when I do this, that last piece back there is going to be cantilevered off of the other three rafter sets. And uh, it'll give him like a uh, a place where if it's raining, he can actually come outside and sit on his little porch board that's back there and uh, still not get wet. So just a, a little added thing, but I couldn't put this all up because I didn't have the other wood I need to do my um, two, my fascias across both sides. And then I'm thinking that uh, that one big piece of uh, one by six there, if I uh, cut that into the lengths I need, I think I can get three pieces out of that. And then rip that into uh, one by twos, then I'll have... Um, nine pieces that I can use, which would mean I could put uh, four on this side, four on that side going up, and then I'll have something to uh, hold the uh, the roofing in place with. And I might just make my own wooden shingles um, out of some other wood I have inside of the uh, container, uh, wood like this. It's uh, That's actually all redwood but painted white and uh i do have probably 20 or so more pieces of that four foot long so i could utilize that and make uh some ship lap or something like that that would work for the roof and uh, it's just got to keep the rain out of uh, tomcat's condo when the rains if the rains ever do come all right anyway um for today's shout outs i'm going to put a few more uh, names out there and I'm going to do them in alphabetical order this time so let's start off with uh, up and Adam 74 from down under way down there in Australia yep and uh, I forget what crocodile Dundee call called women down there as a Sheila something like that I hope that wasn't something bad but anyway uh, Pools Jet, and a shout out to you too. Thank you for being a regular on my channel. David Potter, you've been uh, pretty active lately, and uh, ever since you come on, you've always been uh, a very good subscriber with uh, uh, good comments and questions. Shout out to David Potter. Southeast Ohio Solar Haven. That's Southeast Ohio Solar Haven. And uh, he's fairly new to the channel, but uh, got a pretty nice little site of his own. Go over and see how he's doing. And then there's my friends, Tony and Le Leanne, doing redneck things with Tony and Leanne. Check them out, see what they're up to. I know that they just modified their solar system, and uh, that might interest some of you. And then, uh, of course, my old friend Pierre, Heat Seeker Bus, which is now Backyard Bus. A shout out to you, Pierre. Um, hopefully, someday they'll open that Canadian border. I know there's uh, uh, the southern border's been open for quite a while, so I don't see why the Canadian border shouldn't be just my opinion uh, 
Anyway, thank you all for being regulars on my channel. I really do appreciate that. Now, to fill in for the last couple of minutes here, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you. Remember, uh, I mentioned that uh, last week, starting on Sunday, the winds came up and they blew 24 hours a day with some extreme gusts that were just non-stop. It was really irritating, just non-stop, constant wind. You couldn't do anything outside because the winds were just constantly blowing. And I had to do the uh, chase and trace all around the desert. Oh my gosh, looks like there's a fire over there. Pretty good sized one too. Wow, I wonder what that is. It looks like it just started, so it doesn't look like it's been there for a long time. I hope somebody gets out there and extinguishes. Whoop, let me bring this back down. I hope they come out and extinguish that pretty soon because uh, we don't like fires like that. Of course, the wind is at my back blowing towards that fire. So, um, but they could change any time. You know, fires make their own weather. All right, so let me zoom back out here. Anyway, I was talking about the winds and my turbine was cranking out like crazy and I never came outside to see how everything was going because I have a gauge inside that was telling me, well, my batteries are fully charged and they're, they're on the float and they're just, uh, I don't need any more electricity, everything is full. So after it was all over with, I came out here to do some cleanup and maintenance and I went inside and you can see the the darkness on my batteries there and there. But what had happened was, so I have a little CPU fan that's right underneath there, um, blowing air past my bridge rectifier. And the, uh, I put a switch on there so when it's calm, I don't have to run that fan and wear it out on a constant basis. So uh, on my uh, dump load, it actually turns on when the tump, dump load turns on. So that's safe. But this one, I have a switch where I could turn it on and off. When I was doing maintenance the other day, when I reached underneath the, the fan a couple of times, I hit my bump my knuckles on the fan blades as it was spinning. So I shut it off. And I finished doing my maintenance in there. Well, I forgot to turn it back on. So with all of that, like four or five days of uh, non-stop winds, that uh, rectifier got pretty hot. And how hot did it get? Well, this is how hot it got. Yeah, fried it. So, interestingly enough, though, all it did was um, it cut output from the DC side of this uh, rectifier, but the AC side was still um, al allowed to accept the uh, electricity coming down. It just wasn't sending it to the batteries. So it fried the... Um, 60 amp fusers I had in here as you can see and uh, I said wow that must have been some hellacious power uh, there was three 60 amp fuses on there so it fried all of them so now I have these three wires running and I will be putting in uh, breakers like these on those three lines but uh, for right now, I've got this. Now, I do have a heat sink that was on there for the old uh, rectifier, and that's what kept it from getting hot enough to actually burn wood. But of course, it did put some smoke up here, and this will just wash right off. It's not uh, really uh, anything more than just a stain, but it did get hot there. Anyway, 
I'll show you why. We're coming up here. Okay, so here we go. 84 amps, 1269 watts. 84 amps. Well, no wonder the 60 amp fuse is blue. Now that's what happened. So anyway, it did not hurt my um, PMA. My turbine is working just fine. As you can see, uh, right now there's no wind out here, so it's not um, producing anything. But uh, I, I did hook it up when the winds were blowing, and I checked it, and it was working just fine. So I'm going to shut this one off. That's a, that jet fan right there that blows behind the rover because the rover gets pretty hot during the day. So I, uh, I like to keep it cooled down. Anyway, we're talking about these Ames uh, inverters the last couple of days. And uh, hopefully uh, this week I'll get with the, uh, one of the technicians over at Ames Core and uh, see what I can do about uh, getting my uh, generator tied into that system before the weather gets here. That would be nice. All right, well, it looks like that's, that fire's uh, getting knocked down, so that's a good thing. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. Don't forget thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share. This is G-Bear thanking you for being there and signing off.